and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today we're going to be reviewing the Savage Axis 2. So the Savage Axis 2 is probably the most popular and one of the best budget bolt action rifles on the market right now. Now the reason why it's so popular is usually because around Black Friday, around hunting season, they have some pretty insane specials, which is probably why you're going to see so many of them out there. So the Axis 2 has been around for a while. It has come under a variety of different names. So right now, this is a Savage Axis 2 XP, which generally from the factory comes with a Bushnell banner. And in Canada, they can go as low as 460 to about $600 Canadian. So right now, I think they're like on special around that price. Or in the US, they're usually at the lowest price point, about 300 to about 450 US. They weigh about 6.8 pounds. And this is probably the best deal out there in terms of price for what you get. So this one stands in comparison. If you're looking at comparable rifles, you're going to want to maybe compare this with the, the Stevens 334, which retails around 550 Canadian, the Mossberg Patriot, which around 480 Canadian, or even the Remington 783, or even the ATA Turka, for example. So you can get it chambered in a billion different calibers, 6.5 Creedmoor, 223, 243, 25-06, 270, 30-06, 308, 350 Legend, 7mm 08 Remington. Now, the most important part for pretty much any rifle is going to be the accuracy, which is something we've redone compared to the last review we did on this rifle. Well, because we did it in a aftermarket stock, I really wanted to see how good the action was, not necessarily how good this action could do in this plasticky stock. But demand dictates what I'm doing today, and we are we did, redid the accuracy in the factory configuration. And what I noticed when I was shooting this rifle off the bench rest in this um, uh, in this stock is just how much this thing pops up and it seems to flex in the stock. So it is a free floated stock, but it, it's just so flexible that man, you feel it on that bench rest. Now the average for this rifle is 1.33 inches. We tried it 10 different brands of high-end match ammunition and three of them were below one inch, which is actually quite good. So at this price point, this is the cheapest bolt action rifle on the market. And it beats quite a few of the ones that are significantly above this price point. So let's start with the worst and work our way to the best. The Hornady 140 grain match was 2.24 inches. The Sig Sauer 135 grain hunting was uh, 1.83. The Fiocchi 1.65. Hornady 147 grain was 1.61. The Federal Premium Burger 135 grain, 1.38 inches. The Nosler 140 grain match, 1.22 inches. The Barnes Precision match, 140 grain, 1.07, so almost, almost under an inch. The Hornady 120 grain, 0.94 inches. The Winchester USA 140 grain open tip match, 0.79. And the Cellier and Bellot, 0.61. So the very best it was able to do was 0.61, which is pretty damn good. So I've tried a variety of different rifles, even some rifles that are like $2,500. And some of them didn't perform quite as well as this one did at this price point. So if you were looking for this rifle, this is going to be one of the best for the price. So it's absolutely a decent value in terms of accuracy. Next, let's talk about the barreled action. So there's a few things I want to point out. This is a 90 degree bolt throw and it's, it's definitely not the best for that. It's a two piece design, which if you just press this trigger and press this down here, you can remove the bolt. It's a two piece design, which is Apparently better when it comes to throwing the bolt on the lugs as opposed to a one-piece design. Then again, I've reviewed loads and loads of different rifles, and I can't really say in my experience that's really the case, but it probably makes machining and manufacturing a lot simpler and a lot faster. So it's a 90 degree bolt throw, which isn't ideal because it can get in the way of your scope. It can get caught on your uh, throw lever. Generally speaking on this rifle, you're gonna have something like a Bushnell banner, like it comes with a three to nine by 40, which wouldn't really be a problem anyway. It's got this nice bolt knob here, which makes it easy to grab on and to cycle the action. This action itself isn't, I mean, it's, it's decent. It's decent for feeding. It's decent for extraction, but ejection is one of its weakest points. Like even cycling this action quickly, it tends to like lazily drop the case out uh, without too much vigor, which you're gonna notice that there aren't many little, there aren't any actual little dings on the side of this action, which is something you see on actions that have a very strong ejector that they leave little 
marks on the action, which I guess is a good sign. It's kind of more indicative of a very strong ejector. I've even had some failures to eject with this, but lately I'd say in the last 70 rounds that I've put this, actually no, last, yeah, probably around 70 rounds I haven't had one. I just had a lot of lazy ejections. And I'd probably say in the last uh, 50 rounds that I've put through this rifle, I've probably only seen one full uh, failure to eject with this rifle. So it seems with time, it seems to be getting better or something, or just happens to be happening less often. So on this action, it has a two-piece rail system, which is annoying. I much, much rather a one-piece. If you do want something like a one-piece, um, I would definitely recommend checking out the MDT rails. Uh, the, the, for a few reasons. It gives you a lot more mounting options for your scope and for the scope rings. These mount, these rails um, aren't, aren't Picatinny kind of spacing. So if you had, you know, maybe MDT premier rings, well, they're not going to work. You're going to have to find something with thin spacing, which is kind of annoying because, I mean, I have a variety of different scope rings and it took me a while to find a pair that'll actually fit. So that was kind of annoying. Um, anyway, I mean, it's better than not having any. A lot of companies at this price point and even more expensive don't include anything. So I think even the Remington 700 has no rail whatsoever. I think the, in some cases, the, which one is it? The Howa 1500 doesn't have any rail mounts either. So they have it, it's better than not. Also, whenever you purchase this rifle, take off the scope, torque these down, put a little dab of blue Loctite, just so you never have to worry about that again. Because on budget rifles such as this, those are very, very common things that tend to be loose. And if you're wondering why do you suck at shooting, it could be a variety of reasons. The first things I recommend to check is, uh, well, the easy ones is your, your bedding screws here. Torque those down. I usually torque them down to like 40. Um, these ones, I usually put them down to about 25 with blue Loctite and make sure, you know, your scope is tight in its rings and, uh, and all that. So those are typically the first things I recommend looking at. So also on this action, I mean, once it's cocked, you're going to notice this bolt has a lot of wobble. Like this is cocked and locked and ready to go. But look at this. It, it kind of reminds me of the Mossberg Predator on how kind of loosey-goosey that, that bolt knob kind of is, even once it's kind of cocked. Then again, you know, the axis has been around for a long time. This isn't, I guess, really a real issue that's going to cause a problem. It just kind of doesn't look good. Now, the bolt itself is fairly smooth to operate back and forth, but kind of its locking mechanism is a little bit clunky. Next, the barrel is a 22-inch button-rifled carbon steel barrel. So it's a decent barrel. And for the price point, I think Savage does an amazing job at manufacturing some of the cheapest bolt-action rifles out there that just shoot. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it pretty darn good. So next is the trigger. So the Savage Axis comes with an Accu trigger that breaks between three and six pounds. This one specifically, when I've been adjusting it from its lowest to highest, tends to have a variation of about a quarter pound breaking weight. At this price point, that's, that's not uncommon. That's actually quite common. And this trigger actually breaks pretty cleanly. It does have maybe a little bit of creep, but barely noticeable. And I think you'll probably appreciate that. And compared to some of the competition, it's a little bit better. There are some aftermarket options available if you did want to dump this trigger and put like a Macabo trigger in there. Um, but it's, it's okay from the factory for hunting. I probably wouldn't bother upgrading it. Next is the stock. So this is probably the most ergonomic stock out there. So on the Axis 2, I think XP, they upgraded the stock. And this one is really, really comfortable. It offers you a nice grip on the front, a really comfortable grip on the back. And I have some large size hands. I really like how the grip has a kind of little hook at the end. It really makes it comfortable to grab. And it's got this adjustable uh, length of pull here, so you can put kind of an insert in here or potentially even remove it if you want. It does have sling swivel stuns, one on the front, one on the back, as we typically expect at this price point. And um, it's a really sleek and, you know, more current, more modern design. It does take detachable magazines, which you simply depress this, and it's a metal and plastic design which at this price point, it's quite surprising. Most of the competition, it's just full plastic. So the fact that they're going with steel is a great sign. And these tend to feed quite reliably and clip into place quite well. Now, the stock is also steel pillar bedded, which is a great sign. And it also has a metal recoil lug in the front of the stock. So the stock has a lot going for it, but it's still pretty darn flexible. There's a lot of aftermarket options available in the market because this rifle has proven itself to be reliable and a 
you know, worthwhile, worthy to stand the test of time. So there's loads of aftermarket stocks you can put on this rifle. For example, from Boyd's. This is the Boyd's Agility stock, which at one point this rifle was sitting in and it's very comfortable and nicely adjustable. And it's a nice upgrade over the factory option. Lastly is the warranty. So the Savage Axis 2 has a one year limited warranty for the original purchaser only. You have to register all that stuff. But the reality of Savage's warranty is much, much better than that. Um, they, they kind of take care of everybody who's got a Savage Axis, regardless of who's got it registered, regardless of the original owner, regardless of who registered it. I've actually sent in, well, not this one. This one hasn't really had a need to be sent in, but I've sent in different rifles and they didn't really care who was the first purchaser or any of that stuff. So the fact that they do that is really a good testament to their great customer service. So the Savage Axis 2 um, is probably your best value on the market right now, or one of the best, if you're looking for a great first hunting rifle or even a great second hunting rifle. For this price, and I've compared the other rifles at their sale prices, it's really hard to beat this rifle. So it's an excellent option. So that's my thoughts on the Savage Axis 2. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. If you want to support the channel, if you're looking for great quality optics or even a carbon fiber hunting uh, tripods, check out cdnprecision.com. That's my website and all the proceeds from that website support this channel and help improving our production quality and making these videos possible. So thanks for watching. Epic Arms.